Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep you updated on our videos. So guys, are you ready for another adventure? If you are, fasten your seatbelt and keep watching. Oh and hello, hello, we're on our second stop. Where are we? I can't see the name inside. It's it's Google Google. So what are we doing here? Tell me. We're gonna watch the salmon uh, lay their eggs. Really? really? <laughs> so it's the time of the year where the salmon comes back where they were hatched, and then they're gonna lay eggs, and then they're gonna die. So we'll see if we get lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky! People that lucky seeing salmon fish. Yeah. We'll see if you get lucky if there's lots of salmon fish. <laughs> it really hurts. Hello, guys. So, we are here at the information center, the park etiquette. Be responsible for your own safety and preservation of the park. Please obey posted signs and stay on the designated trail. So, welcome to the park. This is what they call it. Provincial Park. So this is they have the canoeing, cycling, fishing, hiking, wildlife viewing, and picnic tables available. And yeah, this is the history. Lots of information. And this is um stuff. Oh see, so there are freshwater fishing in BC BC. These are the fishes in the river and these are the salmon species here that you can see and yeah this is where the first nations and the salmon this is how they catch fish before and you ready let's get it going so this is the trail so here we go Respect the salmon, stay out of the water, no dogs in the water, do not throw anything in the water. Did you know? Oh, so we're ready. This is the trail, and we're heading. There are lots of signs for us. So, oh, really? Watch out, there's poison ivy. So, stay on the track. They got some washrooms available. And there's more we're here starting our walk. So there's lots of information here about the river and about the cultural history of the area. So lots of information for us. And yeah, we're starting our Adventure. Adventure? It's a short hike, right? Yeah. This is just a short hike going to the river. Just three hours. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? So here's the. I got only 15 minutes. So we're here at the river. You have to go walk on there to see the salmon. So the lady who came in earlier said that we should be patient because they're still not red. They're still dark, so we just have to look. So we'll keep going that way. He looked in So this is how it goes. Okay. Uh, they lay the eggs, then they die there. Wow. One, once the egg hatch. The, the the flesh of their mother would be their food. Oh, but where is it? They the, eat this. But where's the flesh? Oh, right. uh, during their ocean phase, suck I eat constantly, filling their bodies with vital minerals from from the deep Pacific. Mm -hmm. 
the end of their life cycle nutrients from their decompose enrich the okay uh, cannibal for they for they using other wild life and so today we are on a hunt for salmon so everybody knows about the salmon run the salmon run is the time when salmon, which have migrated from the ocean, swim to the upper reaches of rivers where they spawn on gravel beds. After spawning, all Pacific salmon and most Atlantic salmon die and the salmon life cycle starts over again. The annual run can be a major event for grizzly bears, bald eagles, and sport fishermen. Most salmon species migrate during the fall, usually September through November. Most salmon spend their early life in rivers or lakes, and then swim out to sea where they live their adult lives and gain most of their body mass. When they have matured, they return to the rivers to spawn. There are populations of some salmon species that spend their entire life in fresh water. Usually, they return with the uncanny precision to the natal river where they were born, and even to the very spawning ground of their birth. It is thought that when they are in the ocean, they use magnetoreception to locate the general position of their natal river, and once close to the river, that they use their sense of smell to home in on the river entrance and even their natal spawning ground. Isn't it amazing? In Northwest America, salmon is a keystone species, which means the impact they have on the other life is greater than would be expected in relation to their biomass. The death of the salmon has important consequences, since it means significant nutrients in their carcasses, rich in nitrogen, sulfur, carbon, and phosphorus, are transferred from the ocean to terrestrial wildlife such as bears and riparian woodlands adjacent to the rivers. This has knock-on effects not only for the next generation of salmon, but to every species living in the riparian zones the salmon rich. Salmon starts the run in peak condition. The culmination of years of development in the ocean, they need high swimming and leaping abilities to battle the rapids and other obstacles the river may present, and they need a full sexual development to ensure a successful spawn at the end of the run. All their energy goes into the physical rigors of the journey and the dramatic morphological transformation they must still complete before they are ready for the spawning events ahead. The run up the river can be exhausting sometimes requiring the salmon to battle hundreds of miles upstream against strong currents and rapids. They cease feeding during the run. Chinook and sack-eye salmon from central Idaho must travel 900 miles and climb nearly 7,000 feet before they are ready to spawn. Salmon deaths that occur on the upriver journey are referred to as an en route mortality. Fish ladders or fishways are specially designed to help salmon and other fish to bypass dams and other man-made obstructions and continue on to their spawning grounds further upriver. Hi again! So we're here. Any luck? Interview. Any luck? Uh, millions of salmon are like million dollars. They're hard to find. <laughs> So this is expectation versus reality. There's none. Maybe we're too early. Who knows? But we found like few, right? We found few. They are still dark. They didn't turn red yet. So we'll see you again. The term pre-spawn mortality is used to refer to fish that arrive successfully at the spawning grounds and then die without spawning. So we did not quit. We tried to dip our cell phones under the water to see if there are salmon around the river. So keep watching. And ta-da! We are so excited. We found some salmon under the water. They are not visible upstream because they are dark. And they did not turn red yet, but they are huge. It's just amazing to see. The eggs of a female salmon are called her row. To lay her row, the female salmon builds a spawning nest called a red. 
in a rifle with a gravel as its stream bed. A rifle is a relatively shallow length of stream where the water is turbulent and flows faster. She builds the red by using her tail to create a low pressure zone, lifting gravel to be swept downstream and excavating a shallow depression. The red may contain up to 5,000 eggs each about the size of a pea, covering 30 square feet. The eggs usually range from orange to red. One or more males will approach the female in her red, depositing his sperm or milk over her eggs. The female then covers the eggs by disturbing the gravel at the upstream edge of the depression before moving on to another red. The female will make as many as seven reds before her supply of eggs is exhausted. The condition of the salmon deteriorates the longer they remain in the fresh water. Once the salmon have spawned, most of them deteriorate rapidly and die. Deteriorating salmon are alive, but they have begun the process of rotting to death. Deteriorating salmon are sometimes called the zombie fish. There is not much food available for them in fresh water, and they use large amounts of energy swimming upriver and exhausting themselves and burning energy reserves. Most zombie fish die within days of spawning but some can last up to a couple of weeks. Once they die in the river, they are eaten by animals or they decompose and add nutrients to the river. There are notable runs of salmon and we are lucky and fortunate to have experienced this here at Adams River in British Columbia. So guys, what do you think of the video? If you like this video, please don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell for more updated travels with me. I hope you enjoyed watching and you find the vlog very interesting and educational. Thank you so much and I'll see you on our next video.